The following program was underwritten by the Resource Enhancement and Protection Conservation Education Program. My name is Dave Williams and I work with the University of Northern Iowa Tallgrass Prairie Center. I'm going to talk about calibrating a native seed drill. Why even bother calibrating a drill? Why is that important? Well, when you're talking about planting native prairie, three things can really affect native plant establishment when you're talking about seeding and using a drill. Uh, the first thing is seeding depth. And to give you an idea, the ideal seeding depth for most prairie seeds are between a, an eighth and a quarter of an inch. So to give you an idea, the, the ring on this hand is an eighth of an inch thick, and the ring on this hand is a quarter of an inch. So that's the depth that most prairie seeds need to be planted at. Um, plant any deeper and seeds won't germinate. If you plant on the soil, for many, on the top of the soil for many of the seeds, those seeds might germinate, but they're open to being dried out and, and uh, they could desiccate and die. So uh, planting depth is very important. The second thing is a seed to soil contact. And that is you want those soil particles packed tightly around each seed. And that's so there can be an exchange of, of water between the, the soil particles and the seed. Uh, seeds need water to, uh, to start the germination process. So the seed to soil contact is very important. The third important criteria for using a, a native seed drill is you want the seeds to be evenly spread across your planting site. Obviously, if you have areas that, that are, don't receive seed, um, there's no possibility that native plants will establish on those areas. And so it's very important to meter that seed out evenly across the entire planting site. And that's what a native seed drill does. It plants the seed at the right depth, it assures good seed to soil contact, and it also meters the seed out so you can comfortably feel like you've got the seed spread throughout the entire site. This is the uh, uh, Truax uh, grass drill and it's a no-till drill and the reason why it's a no-till drill is because you can use this and you can directly seed prairie seed into killed sod without using any tillage whatsoever. Um, there are other companies that offer uh, no-till drills this drill is, it weighs about 2,000 pounds. This is a utility drill and it's only a four foot, it only drills a four foot wide band with each pass. Um, you can get drills that are, are six foot, eight foot, 10 foot, 12 foot. And so this, this really is the smallest of the Truax drills that are made, the no-till drills that are made. So when we look at this drill, it's, uh, it connects to your tractor by a three point. And the way, the way the drill actually functions is it's driven by a, a drive wheel and on the utility drill, uh, the drive wheel is in the back of the drill, you know, towards the center of the drill, but it's in the back of the drill. Now there, the drive wheels on the larger drills are usually on the side of the drill. Uh, but for this, for this particular model, the drive wheel is on the back of the drill. There are three boxes that, that uh, this drill and other grass drills have. Um, the, the front box, the box closest to the tractor in, this is called the, the small seed box. And this box is just what it says. It's, you use this for very small seed. The middle box is your, what they call the fluffy seed box. And uh, this primarily was designed for seed that has the, their awns and the beards and the the parts that make the seed really fluffy and light and, and, and makes it so that the seed doesn't really flow very well, this box was designed for that. So this is, this is if you have uh, native grass seed that um, the, those parts have not been removed from the seed, uh, they need to go into this middle box. The back box is called the, the cool season box or the grain box and this is made for seed that flows uh, very easily. In other words, when you can, you can take the seed and you can pour it, uh, it flows more or less kind of like water. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not lumpy. Um, uh, with this box, you can actually plant corn and soybeans with it or, or oats. Um, but uh, with the prairie seed that we have now that we get from our, our seed vendors, at least here in Iowa, um, the seed is, is so cleaned down to such a level that um, really this box can be used now for most of your prairie seed. And uh, um, initially when this, when this drill was designed, um, 
you know, years back, uh, the seed was, was the, the cleaning technique wasn't refined like it is now, and so the seed was real uh, uh, lumpy and had all those appendages on the seed, so it didn't flow very well. And this was the primary box that you used to plant native, native prairie seeds. Um, but like I say, with, uh, with the cleaning processes that have uh, improved in the last 10 or 15 years, um, you can use this back, back box now instead of this box. And, and we can talk about some of the advantages um, of using the back cool season box. Uh, one is, is that it actually, I believe, meters the seed a little, a little better than this middle box. And so most of my prairie seedings now are done with this, this back grain box, uh, cool season box. Part of the calibration process um, of calibrating a drill um, is actually mixing the seed. And uh, there's a few steps on, on seed mixing that, that you'll need to consider um, before you actually calibrate the drill. Um, what I have here is uh, seed for uh, one of our campus projects that, that we'll be seeding this spring. Um, and this is six acres worth of seed, of native prairie seed. And I'm going to dump it on the floor just to show you how little seed it is, which makes it even more critical to uh, properly calibrate the drill. Uh, this is six acres, so that's roughly six football fields of area. <clears throat> so when you mix a seed, um, this is already mixed, and you can see the different seeds that are in this pile. But uh, what we do is when we get the seed from uh, commercial nurseries, it comes in individual uh, bags or packets uh, by each species. Um, what you need to do is you need to determine um, which box those species will go into and then actually make a pile by box on, on what we would like to use as a concrete floor. Uh, that makes it easier to, to actually mix the seed. Just to give you an example, this includes about 10 grass species and about 25 forb species. And you can see how easily, how easily this seed pours. Um, you know, this, this seed is, is, uh, has been, the grass seed is being de-bearded and de-awned. In other words, all of those, those appendages that make the seed real sticky have been uh, cleaned off of the seed itself. And, and uh, because of that, it makes this seed very flowable. And um, that's why we're going to use the, the back cool season uh, box uh, to drill this seed uh, because it is so flowable and it's a, it's a very clean seed. One of the situations that very, that very clean seed creates is that you don't have a lot of bulk anymore because a lot of those appendages have been removed. And so, and so your bulk amount of seed has been greatly reduced. And that can be problematic um, uh, when you're calibrating a drill because you don't have a lot of extra seed bulk to go through the drill. Um, so to, to actually boost up the bulk of, clean, of seed that's been really cleaned to this extent, um, we recommend using equal fractions of an inert material uh, just added directly to the seed. And there's a couple of different uh, types of material you can use. You can use crack corn, uh, which is actually corn where the kernels have been damaged, um, so potentially they won't germinate when you, when you include it into your seed. Um, the other material is a driveway absorber, and, and this is basically just crushed clay chips. And you notice that uh, uh, it's, it's pretty coarse material. And so um, if, you're, if your seed is larger and coarse, you'll want to use the clay chips or you want to use the cracked corn. And let's see here. I want to give you... There's a sample of the cracked corn. You can see that the, the individual kernels have been damaged, but it, you can see it's... Uh, fairly larger material. So, so this would work very well with, uh, with uh, grasses and, and larger wildflower seeds um, that have been cleaned. It's a good material to add to, to, to build up the bulk of the seed. <clears throat> uh, for the real fine seeds, the small seeds, if you have to use the front, the front box for your small seeds, a good filler is scoopable cat litter. And scoopable cat litter, you can see, are really fine particles. Um, this is also ground up clay chips, so it, um, it will not damage the drill mechanisms to, to run it through the drill. Um, but you can see it, it, uh, 
you want to match your inert material with the size, roughly the size of the seeds that you're putting it to. So uh, small seed wildflowers and small seeded grasses, um, you probably want to use uh, scoopable cat litter as a, a filler. So we want to uh, mi mix in our inner material to add more bulk to our seed mix. And since I'm, I, I've got primarily grasses and larger seeded wildflowers, I'm going to use uh, cracked corn. And you'll want to add about an equal amount of inner material to, the, to your, actually your seed quantity. So I, as just an estimate, I'm, I'm just going to add this one bag of cracked corn. And here comes the high tech part. You just use a corn scoop. Mix the seed up real well with the, the inert material. Um, basically you know it's mixed when, it, when you don't get any real dense spots of your inert material. So just keep mixing. So after you get the, your seed thoroughly mixed with your inert material, and in our example it's cracked corn, um, you'll want to rebag it and this is where you can recycle your, your uh, seed bags that, that uh, you had actually purchased the seed from the commercial nursery. So here's our seed bags that the seed came in. My, my motto is waste not, want not, so I will make sure that I get every seed up off the floor. That's a potential plant and, and uh, native prairie seed is kind of expensive, so you definitely don't, don't want to lose any, any seeds. And next thing we need to do is get a gross weight of, of all of our seed for the planting site. So I've got a scale set up here. Um, this is a this is a kind of a fancy scale, but you, but you can actually use like a a, a weight scale, um, just holding the bag. You know, weigh yourself without the bag, and then weigh yourself with the bag. Take the difference, and you can figure out the weight that way. You don't have to have a fancy scale. So what I what I need to do is put a receptacle on the pad, and then I'll have to zero it out. Don't forget to zero your scale out if you use a receptacle. Otherwise, you'll get a, an inaccurate weight. So then I just lift the bag of seed, gently put it into the scale, and I've got 35.79 pounds. I'm just going to round it up to 36 pounds for this bag. So there's not a lot of seed here. We got, we've got to be fairly accurate on how we do this. Okay, the second bag weighs 32.88. I'm just going to round it up to 33. So our total seed weight with our cracked corn that we added is 69 pounds. So we have 69 pounds of seed to work with for six acres.